All right. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Daniel Grant. I'm presenting on uh, detecting homoglyph attacks with Siamese Neural Network on behalf of uh, my colleagues, Hiram Anderson, Jonathan Woodbridge, and Anjum Ahuja. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So what is a homoglyph attack? Um, we're talking about uh, deceptive attacks that sort of exploit the visual similarity of uh, different characters. Um, this can happen uh, in the context of this paper in uh, a process or a domain, perhaps. So for a few examples, we have uh, SVC host, something you'll see on a bunch of Windows machines. That can be spoofed with uh, replacing the, the O with a zero. Uh, LSAS is A with a four. I explore um, replacing any of the E's with a C, um, and C CH time right here, replacing the M with an RN, so multiple characters for a replacement. Um, these all sort of fool the eye a little bit if you're not paying close attention, and that's where like the attack actually happens. Um, this isn't just a uh, hypothetical situation, too. Um, there have been several attacks that have used this. Uh, one in last September, the Betabot Trojan, um, this is an example of a, an email that you might get where you might notice the B in Adobe is actually another character. Um, due to uh, IDN, the international domain name um, system, you can use characters other than the normal ASCII characters for domains. They get translated differently. They might display differently in your browser, but the, the link to it could look exactly like this. Um, also, the, the SMB worm. Um, this was a, a worm that happened, and it replaced, uh, or it also used the, the SVC host uh, uh, executable, but replaced the zero, or the O with a zero. Um, and so you can see in, uh, in like the, the Windows Task Manager, both of these running at the same time. They don't have any conflicts. They're different names, but they, they both sort of fool each other. Um, so the prior art on this, um, one, of the, one of the techniques that was uh, previously used was counting the number of insertions, deletions, and substitutions. This is often the, the Levenstein edit distance. I'm sure many people are familiar with that. Um, it does have some, some failures, though. Um, we can see how this would be applied. Uh, the, the SVC host uh, example has one edit distance because uh, you replace the O with a zero. Um, this example inserts an R. We remove an O in this one, and we do multiples. We can substitute the L with a one and an E with a C. Um, unfortunately, uh, using the, this edit distance produces a lot of false positives and creates a, a very easy way to, to mitigate any detection here if you just go right outside of the threshold of edit distance here. If uh, whatever your detection mechanism is saying, well, if we think it's two edit distance away, um, to a legitimate use uh, process or a domain, then uh, we're gonna block it or we're gonna detect it. But you can just go three edit distance away at that point, and that's sort of a, a trivial mitigation. Um, an improved version of that is using uh, edit distance weights to try to create a, a distance between similar character sets. Um, some of these, uh, would show as very similar. So like a zero and uh, an O would be very similar. A one and an L perhaps would be very similar. Um, or if you're using digraphs, uh, two characters, um, you can use an R and an N to replace an M. The problem with this is that you have to define the similarity or find some way to make the similarity. And that might not be too, uh, too intractable of a problem if you're just using uh, ASCII characters, um, but if you branch into the realm of Unicode, which a lot of processes allow, and with the international domain name system that allows, um, this becomes a much bigger problem. Nobody wants to define every single similarity between every single character pair or single character system. Um, and then you know, see that some are not similar. So if, if we were doing this, we would say the distance is one minus the similarity. Um, so in general, what we decided to do is uh, we thought using images in security was a little bit underutilized. So what we're doing is we're taking the text and converting that to an image and then using the images to create a feature vector. Um, the image to feature vector version or portion of this is where we start the deep learning portion. Um, so anything with the feature vectors that have small Euclidean distance would represent uh, strings that are very closely aligned to each other and might be a, a homoglyph attack. Um, as a practical part of this, 
we're going to try to use KD trees to look up similar strings instead of you know, doing just the, the nearest neighbor search uh, by brute force. Um, so for indexing this, we're, we're using about 50K of the most common domain names, 50K of the most common processes. So these are two problems solved in a, a similar streamlined way. Um, so to, to train this, to turn the image into a feature vector, we're gonna use the Siamese neural network. Um, and these neural networks aren't anything uh, very, very special. Um, it's basic covnets with max, pool, max pools, um, just a couple of those, and flatten and dense. Um, but what we're doing is we're taking the pairs of, of domains in this example um, that we, we define as, as potential spoofs. So in this example, google.com with two O's and google.com with three O's, the three O obviously being the potential spoof. Um, running those through the Siamese network, which as many of you know, is a identically formatted network that share weights. Um, and then taking those weights out of both of those and giving them the training label of, of zero, since we want to say if we think these are spoof networks, if they are close to each other, spoof strings, then we want to say the edit distance should be small, zero. Um, if we want to train it with Google versus Facebook, then we want to say the edit distance there is one. Um, the, that, that's not a spoof, the Google is not a spoof of Facebook and vice versa. So that's the labeling set that we come through, the spoof networks and the non-spoof networks trained with zero or one depending on which case. Um, and after training this, we can, we can try to check and see if our, our approach is right. Um, we run a PCA on the feature vectors and see of, of these, um, you can see on the table on the left, um, or table on the right, um, you can see several different spoof versions of, of these original domains. So Google with two O's, three O's, with a zero, with a umlaut, uh, all sorts of stuff. Um, and then you can see how they cluster together in the PCA um, representation. So all of the, in the bottom left, all of the Twitter variations all sort of cluster together because they're features from the, um, the Siamese network, from the Covnets, co uh, they sort of represent similar um, similar characteristics, and so they, they um, cluster together. And so, in general, um, we want to say the process of doing this, uh, we would initially start with a list of domains, um, and this is for the domain representation example. Process would be done the same, but with a different insert, um, a different starting set, data set. Um, we want to list the common domains. This could be gathered in a number of ways. The easiest is just to get the Alexa 1 million and, and chop off the first 50K if you want. Um, so you can take the list of common domains, you convert them all into uh, images, um, just using whatever tool you have available. Uh, as a little caveat, uh, you have to be careful about fonts, um, or you have to diversify your fonts to make sure this is agnostic to them. Um, for this study, we just use a, an Arial-based font. Um, just to keep things simple, but this is easily uh, moved on further to that. Um, so we take the list of common domain names, convert to images. We use the, the Covnet to convert all these to a feature vector, and then we index them all in the KD tree. Um, so we have a fast approximate search. So now we have an index that we can check things against. And so when we want to do that, we take a potentially malicious domain, um, and then we convert that into the feature vector, send it to the KD tree, see what the closest, um, closest value that we have indexed to it is, and if that pops up as, as under a threshold, so if it is very close to Google, then we can you know, flag that as a potential homoglyph attack. Um, while doing this, uh, we, we tried to use KD trees just because we didn't want to brute force feature lookup of 32 features and find the nearest neighbor of that. Um, but we, we wanted to check out the performance. We're using some randomi randomized trees instead of a uh, deterministic tree just to increase this a little bit. But the performance isn't too bad. Um, this might be an area where we can improve on further. But really the, the question is about accuracy. Um, and so we're measuring that with the, the rock curve, uh, area under the rock curve. Um, so you can see on the, uh, the left side, this is for uh, process spoofing. Um, if we're doing just edit distance, you're, you're about the same as just a, a, a guess. 
um, you're, you're not doing much better than 50-50. Um, if you're doing visual distance, you get a little bit of a boost, but uh, using our method with the Siamese neural networks, you get a, a pretty good uh, area on the curve. You'll probably notice um, right at the bottom left, there's this little tail. Um, that's, that's a little quirk due to uh, a lot of processes that are short in name. Um, uh, they, they have legitimate things that look like them. So for in instance, you have Java as a process and Java C as a process. Both of those are completely legitimate. Both look like spooks of each other. <laughs> um, so you have to account for that. That's an unsolved problem, one that we might want to explore later. But that sort of explains the little tail there. And on domain spoofing, we have a little bit less of a problem. So we have a more robust accuracy here. Um, visual edit distance does a little bit better, uh, as well as uh, regular edit distance. But uh, our accuracy um, ups that a little bit. Uh, and if anybody wants to recreate this, we've got um, all the code and data sets up on uh, the repo at Endgame Inc. on GitHub um, under the homoglyph repo. So uh, please go check it out. Uh, let us know if you have any questions or any additions. Um, we're, we're happy to, to add to this. Thank you. Uh, how about training uh, this Euclidean uh, metric on the text directly by using, you know, embeddings, convolutional networks? What would be the difference? Yeah, so the, the reason we didn't want to use text directly is because uh, changing character to character, um, if you're using, like, say, a Unicode representation, the character for C, um, you know, I'm not going to guess at what the actual code is, but, but it's, it's one number. But the character for C with some other um, accent to it is vastly different. So they have no representation of closeness to each other. But if you're using this as an image, a visual representation, then you could see that this is, this is trying to mimic another character. Does that make sense? You, you could still learn. You could still learn a representation of the, the 50K Unicode characters to another 50K Unicode characters. Um, but that, that does eat up a lot of space, too. Um, so we thought the visual representation um, would be useful. And in general, we think the visual representation of attacks is underutilized um, in the security domain. Uh, it's, it's got a lot of work in uh, you know, finding cats on YouTube. But we, <laughs> we haven't really uh, worked it too much in the security domain. Hi, I'm Hi. Jeffrey from Symantec, yeah. and I was just wondering, you, you did say you only use the aerial font, but how would, um, can you speculate on a different font having a different effect on the prediction? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I think different fonts, I think we would have to increase our training set and increase our training size. Um, but there, there definitely would be differences, uh, especially if you use serifs versus non-serif fonts. Um, a lot of this depends on what sort of attack you're looking to mitigate. So if you're looking at the web browser on, uh, on you know, uh, Chrome or something, they're using a specific font for the, the URL. Um, if you're using you know, font on Outlook, maybe you can change that and have it represented differently. Um, but yeah, you would definitely, um, going back here real quick, you would see that uh, the, the one serifed and the L serifed looked very similar, but they might look different in another font. Um, so that's definitely something, just expanding the data set. Uh, I think it would work. It wasn't part of this uh, narrowly scoped experiment, but I think that would work. Okay, we are running out of time. So if you have uh, more questions, please discuss with the speaker offline. Okay, let's Wait. thank the speaker again. <laughs>